kind of just admit defeat, you know, and, um, and I didn't, and here I am, you know. Yeah. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. I, we can, um, I, I really, I don't want to end this or close this without giving you an opportunity. No, go ahead. Um, I, I, at any time I hear you speak about your mom, it, it's, it's very heartwarming. Um, you know, t I don't know about your mom that much. I feel like I'm missing out. <laughs> you know, yeah. like I, I don't, I, I didn't, you, you know, I, I bet. And I kind of heard about your parents from, you know, in a distant far off land. And your mom seems like this, such an amazing person and with a, a wonderful heart. Can you share a little bit? I mean, I mean, her legacy in your life seems humongous. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I have a pretty good mixture of both of the, my folks, um, which I'm, I'm grateful for, to be honest with you. I, I funny is I have this little necklace and it's got a, it's kind of a big necklace actually, and it's got a B on it. Huh. And uh, I got it like a year ago and I, I decided that I was just gonna, rather than try to avoid being a baker and everything, I would embrace being a baker, you yeah. know, and, and embrace my legacy. Yeah. Uh, that I have. Um, that's not the most popular, but it's okay. Um, well, for my mom, you know, she is just born in International Falls, Minnesota, this little Minnesotan girl who was full of life, you know, and met my dad in Bible College in uh, Minnesota. And um, they got married and became children's ministers and, and did puppets and stuff. And, and, but she had a lot of life and, she was insecure. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that she wore a lot of makeup because she didn't feel like she was pretty. Uh, and she's really a beautiful woman. Um, you know, I, with or without makeup, I thought she was really pretty without makeup. And I always tell her that when I would see her at home when I was a kid even. Um, but her makeup was kind of her armor. And I think that's what my tattoos were for a while for me. It was kind of my armor uh, to kind of protect me from the world. <laughs> Um, probably what my hat is, is covering my bald head. Um, but you know, it was like, but she was full of life and full of love. And I think she, I, she could have never sat down and read a theology book. I don't think, or yeah. a philosophy book. Um, she loved romance novels, you know, she loved stuff like that. Um, like paperback romance novels, you know, huh? <laughs> when, when people didn't know that Fabio was real, yeah. you know, they just thought he was a drawing, you know, those kind of books. Yep. Um, but, um, she's a complex human being full of contradictions, to be honest with you. Um, just as we all are. Yeah. But she loved people, you know, she loves people a lot. She had a very sensitive heart. Um, you know, people always made fun of her crying. And that was a combination between she really did love and care about people. And she has also suffered from uh, medication addictions, which, you know, things like Valiums and Ativan will make you cry very easily. But she had a lot of pain in her life, a lot of pain that wasn't dealt with. And to be honest with you, I don't completely know all the sources of those pain. Yeah. But I, as I look back now and, and on Instagram, there's uh, a few Tammy Faye fan pages okay. and, um, and sometimes, you know, I'll see these pictures of my mom and I will just see the pain in her eyes, you know, and her and my dad, I don't think had the perfect marriage. Um, but she loved people. She was passionate about people. And, you know, in the eighties when, you know, Reagan hadn't even talked about the word AIDS, you know, my mom doesn't just have someone with AIDS on it. And she could have very well found someone who accidentally got a blood transfusion and got AIDS or something like that. But no, she got an MCC pastor, an openly gay pastor, um, to come on the PTL television show. And, I, and he, my mom interviewed him. I think my dad was probably too afraid to, I think, but my dad still was the one who had to make that decision for it to happen. But it was like, Tammy yeah. can get away with it. And she could, <laughs> yeah. you know, um, she was also very practical about humanity and she, you know, and sexuality and, and all that kind of stuff. So, um, and her, I think her own sexual, I think she did a show once on penile implants and yeah. you know, she had the Tammy's house party party and, you know, you know, how to get a boner basically like, you know, 
yeah. but that was that was a reality for people and i think they made it okay for christians to be like yeah you can talk about erections yeah you can talk about this you know you can talk about life um that's awesome, that's awesome man he, yeah you know i mean so she she had you know you know had a guy who was an openly gay pastor of an openly gay congregation on a show being interviewed by an assemblies of god pastor i mean what the hell you know, if it would have been any Assemblies of God preacher, they would have been like, you need to get right with God. You're wrong. I mean, my mom did say, did you ever try to like girls? <laughs> you know, and people made fun of it because how simple she was about it in some ways. Some people made fun of it and thought like, oh, poor guy, you deal with Tammy Faye. But what they don't realize is that that was part of my mother's charm and maybe part of, 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 of she knew her role well, you know. She knew what she was capable of and not capable of, so she knew that being silly was part of what allowed her to do her work. Um, and you know, and I think that's what allows me to do some of my work sometimes. Um, it being self-deprecating, you know, and and she would do it as though like, oh, you know, um, I think she knew that, and that's how she did it, you know, because she had to rely on the tools that she had. Yeah. And um, that moment changed my life forever because i knew as a little kid that that was a big deal um but i also knew that she was showing love and grace to somebody else and it still blows my mind that not just that it was someone with aids when aids wasn't being talked about and aids was seen as the plague at the time like yeah. the plague i don't think people remember that often you know i, I wish more young people in in that community would would look at that time because it was a such a such a horrible time for the gay community and um a revolutionary time, I think, for America. I think it really did something for us. It was like, you know, if COVID was only for one group of people, yeah. you know, yeah. and it was deadly, like yeah. just you were guaranteed death. And, um, but then also an openly gay man who was a pastor. I mean, just all those things. And she's sitting down having this conversation with him. And that changed everything for her and for me. And for the pastor was a part of it, I think. I think, and the MCC, I think. I, I just think there was like this connection between two worlds that wasn't supposed to come together, and yeah. it did. But she constantly did that. She constantly loved people. I mean, I remember one of her friends married Hugh Hefner's brother, and she went to the Playboy Mansion and visited her. You know, that was you're not supposed to do that, but because my parents were at a certain level, a certain thing, she could get away with it. Yeah. You know. And my dad, you know, they could get away with certain things of loving certain people. And that's the funny thing is that, that that's what they were getting away with is being more inclusive. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people don't see that and don't remember that. You know, all they think is like, oh, greedy televangelists. Yeah, my dad liked money, but he also liked building buildings more than he wanted personal money. Mm -hmm. You know, he probably wanted a nice house so mom would be happy. You know <laughs> what I mean? For him, his happiness was building and preparing talks, you know. Um, so, so that was his thing, you know, so, you know, it's, it's sad that the legacy that's there. And then now that my dad's super conservative, some of that legacy gets, gets, gets thrown out too. And people forget that legacy. Um, you know, people see my life and like, Oh, you're so different from your dad. You're so different from your mom. And I'm like, no, I'm part of their legacy. You know, yeah. I, I, they, they shaped me and put me in the direction so I could read that talk about grace and be like, aha, and take it seriously. So I could read the scriptures at the time and for LGBTQ stuff, take it seriously. So I could meet someone like Pete Rollins and listen to him and be challenged by him and take it seriously and find my own way to use that work to what I do. You know, I mean, my parents built those things within, within me. You know, now there's a lot of dumb things that they did that, I mean, I wish they would have taken my education more seriously and things like that, that I, I resent them for. But my mom loved to shop. Um, I actually think she was still feeling that sadness, but she'll always look for deals, you know, we always go to the mall together and we always eat together. And I loved those times. Um, you know, I loved those times that we shared together and we, just, and we would just be friends, you know, and, and have long conversations. And uh, then, you know, we'd go home and she'd go to her room and I'd go to my room and we were just both happy enough to, to know that we were there. Mm -hmm. um, so I had a, she could be angry when she was hungry. She could be mean sometimes, not often uh, to me, but, you know, she was a human being. Um, but she, you know, like I would, I, my, one of my best friends when I, in my twenties, uh, was my buddy Chuck, who was a Satanist. 
and Chuck would come home, you know, pentagrams on, you know, long hair and you know, all that stuff. And he'd come home and have Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner and spend it with my family, you know, and my mom was there. My mom loved him and always loved all my friends, no matter what they looked like or who they were. And she just didn't have a lot of room to judge anybody. Even though like she would be like, well, you know, she believed in civil union and not gay marriage before she, you know, before she passed and, and all that stuff. But she still was like, she was probably never used the word gay affirming, but she was more, you know, but she was, you know, she would go to gay pride parades and lead them. And yes, Jesus loves me, you know, and she did radical stuff like that and she could get away with it and do it. And people would be like, Oh, Tammy. But at the same time, it was like she was starting a revolution. And so for me, I was thinking about my mom the other day mm-hmm. because I watched this documentary on this, um, this, this uh, Puerto Rican um, psychic guy who's really flashy and, oh, yeah, and yeah, wore yeah. all these capes and stuff. I can't remember his name right now for the life of me, but and I was watching this documentary and it was very touching, honestly. And then I was looking at my mom because they were both very flashy human beings. And and I'm like, here are people who got made fun of for being like, my mom had too much makeup or this guy would wore makeup and was androgynous and he looked crazy. And in some ways it was hokey and then, you know, pop culture and all this stuff. But then I look at both of these folks and I go like, these people had something that even punk rockers did. Because at least punk rockers have their own little community of like other punk rockers. So we're like, yeah, we're individuals with our leather jackets and our tattoos, you know. Um, but they were really people who seemed to be true individuals who were like, you know, and not like, you know, David Bowie did it in a really cool way, but they did it in a way that was just not as cool as David Bowie, but they still did it. Yeah. You know, and they were true to who they were and got a message out. And that whole message was love and acceptance. And it maybe it was something that they got from them being who they really were. And maybe just being like, I'm going to live life on my terms and be happy the way I want to be happy. Even if people make fun of me, even if people think I'm this or that, even if people write me off, you know, but I'm still going to talk about love and care. And so there was something to me that was like, even beyond punk rock now that I look at it and go like, man, imagine that. Imagine the point like where, you know, I'm going to be a really individual without, without my own, without a group, Yeah. you know, without my own group. Like, you know, it's easy to be punk rock. There's millions of punk rock kids out there and people and who think different you know, it's like being a part of a church, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, just the fact that I'm 44 makes it a little sad. Um, but, you know, but what I'm saying is, is like, you know, but then you look at people like that and you get like, okay, these are people who really did their own thing and just didn't give a damn. Yeah. And if they did give a damn, they took that hurt and that pain and switched into another. Because my mom could have taken that makeup off anytime. Mm. You know, she could have started wearing pants suits, you know, or whatever you know, and not wear a hot pink and leopard print and all that stuff. And, you know, find the craziest thing she could at TJ Maxx. Yeah. She could have done that, but she didn't, you know, and she loved people. And the cool thing was, is that to see how that affected my dad, because my dad at, you know, at least from when I was younger, you know, really loved people and, 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 and they just did things that like weren't always on camera that often perplexed me and they both taught me to love my enemies like when people would say horrible things to us on the street you know my mom would be like god love you honey god bless you you know like never like go to hell or fuck you or you know i mean they wouldn't say anything like that yeah you know there they weren't like god's vengeance you know just none of that came out when the whole world was against them they were still trying to tell the whole world that they were still loved even when people came up to their faith I mean, my dad is the reason that I sat down with Jerry Falwell and, and worked on forgiving him, mm. you know, because they all told me about the importance of forgiveness. Now, if you thought, if I thought that I would be 20 years down the road doing this, trying to get liberals to forgive Jerry Falwell, you know, and conservatives to love, you know, progressives, you know, I would have been like, no, you're crazy. But that's what that kind of thing did to me. Mm-hmm. You know, and I've just been lucky enough to run into and have relationships with people who've helped refine their work and my life. Um, so I owe a lot to them, yeah. you know, and, and people can take it for what it's worth. But so it's like, there's no me without them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's awesome, man. I, I, I see my kids. I have five kids. I'm, I'm, 
I'm a two-time divorcee as well. Oh, me too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but they they go with their mom to a you know a, a Baptist church and and they love it and yeah. you know they're they're my kids. I mean they're they've got this message within them, but they've kind of figured they've learned from my mistakes and they've kind of figured out how to not be undercover at all, but be themselves without maybe being as divisive as I, I have been. Right. But, so, you know, the, our kids kind of go from our, our shoulders, stand on top, and, and, and you've done that. You've done that, and I'm looking forward to what your kids do as well, you know. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, my, 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 my son has is, is, is got such a sensitive heart. And I can see so much of my mom and myself in him, you know, and, you know, this, it's, it's, in some ways it worries me to death because I'm like, this is a tough road. You know, I don't feel like I was really able to grasp dealing with that type of sense, that empathy that you get, because you don't only have sympathy, feel sad for yourself, but you're, you know, and depression and stuff, but you're also able to feel it for other people. And I don't think I was able to really control that until I got into my 40s. I'm only 44, you know. So, um, you know, I hope I can help him with, with that because it's, it's, it's really hard when you feel a lot. Um, yeah. It's kind of a blessing and a curse depending on what you do. So, And how are you um, 